What's in a name? A lot, if we're being honest. Names are symbolic. Someone whose name carries a lot of weight in American culture is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And you can see that name on streets across the country. But what is life like in these spaces? Beyond the name, there's a legacy. Behind the streets, there are stories. This is a King's Place. Dr. King's name is synonymous with peace, justice, and nonviolent resistance. And after his assassination in 1968, people around the world wanted to commemorate the civil rights leader by naming streets after him. I wondered how Dr. King's legacy is memorialized in different cities. So to get started, I headed to one of the most diverse places in the U.S., New York City. Here in New York, you can find an MLK designation from a place or boulevard to an expressway in every borough but Queens. This one in Harlem was named in 1984, but Harlem's MLK Boulevard is more commonly known as 125th Street. It makes sense for this upper Manhattan neighborhood to have dedicated a street in King's honor, considering his history with the area. He preached at Harlem's Abyssinian Baptist Church in 1965, and he also delivered a famous speech against the Vietnam War at Riverside Church. And most infamously, MLK was stabbed by a woman in 1958 while signing books on the street that now bears his name. Chicago was the first city in the U.S. to name a street after King, but you can also find MLK named streets in places like Haiti, Germany, and India. Now, there are nearly 1,000 streets named after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. all around the U.S. Over three quarters of those streets are in the South, but MLK's name isn't found in just any street. To get a better sense of what goes into naming streets, I spoke with Dr. Derek Alderman, a geographer who's been studying MLK named streets since the mid-1990s. The whole reason that we have these streets named for Dr. King is not simply to honor King, but in fact, you know, the very first street naming campaigns were started by African-American activists coming right out of the civil rights movement, who basically suggested that it was important to name a street for King is a way of challenging the racial power that, that whites had often had over public memory and public spaces within cities. Are there any particular connotations that are associated with MLK streets? These streets undergo sort of a negative branding. Uh, they, they go through a stigmatizing. There's tended to develop the stereotype that all streets named for King are somehow um, confined to certain poor, largely minority areas. And unfortunately, that stereotype, which is not always true, but even, even if it was somewhat true, is still used insidiously by opponents to try to further confine King's name to those places because it, 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 it paints the picture that these places are of no value, when in fact they're of great value. The joke that always comes up is like the Chris yeah. Rock saying that, you know, if you're on MLK Boulevard, run! <laughs> like, that's the running joke. You know the one from Chris Rock's infamous 1996 now special, Bring the Pain. King, a street. And I don't give a f where you in America. If you're on Martin Luther King Boulevard, there's some violence going down. It's the safest place to be. You can't call nobody and tell them you lost on MLK. I'm lost. I'm on Martin Luther King. Run! Run! Chris Rock, who's a pretty revolutionary comedian, was trying to say something very important. His joke drew a lot of laughs, but it was critical commentary. But at the same time, what's interesting or tragic, so I've actually sat in city council meetings where I've heard uh, opponents repeat that joke and actually suggest that, well, there you go. That's proof that if we name a street for Dr. King, it will bring crime, it will bring drug trade, it will bring violence. It will bring all these sort of indicators of uh, economic, social marginality. In this case, Chris Rock's a, a attempt to challenge us to think about uh, how we remember Dr. King is actually used against Dr. King. Dr. Alderman says MLK named streets have become somewhat of a marker of segregation, but the racial landscape of Harlem's MLK Boulevard has really changed over time. Harlem was once known as the black epicenter of New York. Many of the streets are named after prominent black figures aside from MLK, like Malcolm X, Adam Clay and Powell Jr., and Frederick Douglass. But walking in Harlem now kind of feels like a tug of war between the past and the present. Many of the black-owned lounges and cotton clubs of yesteryear are 
nowhere to be found. Just see for yourself, the historic Apollo Theater on 125th Street or MLK Boulevard now shares a wall with the Banana Republic. That's the Apollo Theater, where the likes of B.B. King, The Temptations, and Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells once graced the stage. But those days are long gone. Local vendors are a staple on Harlem's MLK Boulevard. As 125th has changed over time, many have seen its transformation firsthand. So tell us how long you've had your stand here in Harlem. I've been in Harlem as a vendor for about 11 years. How have you seen the neighborhood culturally shift, if at all? Well, again, we have a lot of people that were living here in Harlem now finding themselves relocating to other areas. But there's definitely been an influx of other nationalities, other than black, a lot of Caucasians moving into the area. And I'm going to say those people really don't shop locally. I want to learn more, so I met up with Harlem historian Michael Henry Adams to get some context about the area's history and culture. Mr. Adams, how are you? Hello. Oh, hello, Very hello, nice hello. You. you too? All right, let's go. Michael has lived in Harlem for over 30 years. Aside from documenting how it's changed over time, he attends city planning meetings and speaks out against removing Harlem's historical landmarks. You know, Harlem slowly, bit by bit, is disappearing. You won't recognize it. I mean, they'll just be some landmark here and there, like the Apollo Theater or the Hotel Teresa. Well, on the tour, Michael showed me the iconic Spirit of Harlem mural that was recently restored after some controversy. There was fake brick here that covered this completely. And what was and the reason for them covering it up? They wanted their foot action logo, which there used to be a sign here that said foot action. This, this sign mm -hmm. was here, okay. and they wanted it to show better, so they covered it up. But uh, Louis Desarte, this incredible artist, made this tribute to the spirit and the joy and the creativity of African Americans. Well, oftentimes when one comes out and protests and demonstrates, there's no happy ending, but here there is one. Here's the happy ending. But unfortunately, not everything or everyone is getting the chance to stay in Harlem. A report done by NYU's Furman Center classified central Harlem as gentrifying and stated that as white populations increased in those neighborhoods, black populations decreased. Harlem, land of swing and jive. In 1930, Central Harlem was 70% black and climbed up to 98% by 1950. By 2016, that population was cut almost in half. Rents have also increased by 31% from 2010 to 2016, and a major reason for that increase is gentrification. With that in mind, I headed to Columbia University to speak with Lance Freeman, a professor of urban planning and author of There Goes the Hood, views of gentrification from the ground up. So what is the definition of gentrification? Gentrification is when you have an older neighborhood that has experienced uh, disinvestment, uh, perhaps depopulation, and over time that process reverses itself and you start to have more affluent households moving into the neighborhood and perhaps also more investment, more retail stores opening up as well. So it's sort of a, a reversal in the socioeconomic status of the neighborhood, one where it was relatively disadvantaged to one where it's becoming more affluent. What is currently happening in Harlem? Would that be a classic example of an area gentrifying? Yes, I think you could definitely say that. Early 20th century, at that time, it was a black uh, mecca. You know, it was the home of the Harlem Renaissance or the Negro Renaissance. And then like many predominantly black neighborhoods in the early 20th century, Harlem started to experience disinvestment, right? So there was not much in the way of new housing being built there. As uh, real estate became more expensive in other parts of Manhattan, people started to look to Harlem as a place to secure more affordable housing. And so the process kind of repeats itself. People who perhaps in the past would have looked for housing in Harlem no longer can afford it, and so they have to look somewhere else in order to afford housing. Despite sharing a name with Martin Luther King Jr., 125th is part of a greater story that goes beyond the civil rights leader's namesake. We tend to be so focused, including me, so focused on the street name 
that we lose sight of the fact that these are places and neighborhoods and communities that are part of a larger political economy. They are in many ways the canary in the coal mine. They tell us what has gone on in those cities. So these streets are valuable for not just talking about the difficulties of remembering King and maybe you know where his name is ending up, but they speak to really the larger issue about what has happened within African American communities. And, and we as a society have really failed to address that adequately. So what does this all mean? Is King's legacy honored by 125th's gentrification? I'm not sure. But what I do know is that King prioritized people over profits. During the same speech in Harlem where MLK spoke out against Vietnam, he also warned about both racism and capitalism, especially when profit motives and property rights are considered more important than people. And in this case, rising rents and the displacement of Black people are proof that value is being placed in new buildings and stores instead of the very people King fought for. 